Texas A&M, the Aggies in College Station, had their spring game yesterday. Uh, they, I think, have a lot of reasons to be really encouraged about what's coming yeah, this season, this fall. I think Jimbo Fisher, even with the loss of Kellen Mond, now I want you to think about this as a multi-year starter, there is reason to believe they've got their best version of Texas A&M football coming in this fall as he's had since he's been there. So let's talk about the spring game yesterday. Did it validate that? Because it didn't need to be a pretty spring game to lead you to the conclusion that it could be a pretty special season. A&M's in a great spot right now. I'm glad, as a matter of fact, that we saw what we saw yesterday because this is another of those classic examples of what a lack of access and information can do to you. And I told you, A&M has been notoriously tight with the information. Them and Michigan, hard to get information out of those two places this spring. So you've heard what you've heard. And what you've heard is Haynes King, probably the definitive favorite to win the quarterback job, right? And that's all you've heard. And so what I've told you many times is when there is not a lot of information coming out, but there's still a hunger and a thirst for updates, then one thing can be said by one person and then it can be echoed by 10,000 people. And if that one person got not even false information, but just maybe exaggerated information, and then 10,000 other people say it, you may think these 10,000 people heard it from their own unique sources when they really didn't. They were just parroting what this one person over here said, because there is no new, fresh information to be had. Well, I'm not saying that's happened necessarily here. All I'm saying is I think when some people watched this spring game yesterday, this quarterback race looked a little bit closer than some believed it was. Now, Zach Calzada had some good moments yesterday. Haynes King had some good moments yesterday. That's to be expected in a spring game. I thought Calzada looked like a guy they could win with. I think Haynes King is also a guy they can win with. My feel on this, just my personal feel, having watched Jimbo Fisher over the years, is King is his favorite. King is the guy who is his favorite in his mind to be a starting quarterback. And I think it would take a very, very strong effort throughout the summer and then fall camp portions of practice for Calzada to overtake him. But pretend you don't think that. Pretend I don't think that. And pretend you didn't hear an ounce worth of reporting out of College Station until yesterday's spring game. If you just watched that and nothing else, how big would you think the gap is between those two? I don't think you'd believe the gap is very big at all. So I'm not saying this is as wide open maybe as the situation at Tennessee. But I am saying I think they got a good situation here because when you listen to Jimbo Fisher after the spring game and the questions kept getting tossed to him, what do you think coming out of spring now? What's the update with quarterback? And finally, I think it was Lauren Sisler with, um, with uh, ESPN, SEC Network, who asked him after the game and he said, you know, y'all want to keep talking about quarterback. I, I'm not worried about quarterback. You keep talking about quarterback. I'm worried about how we're going to protect him. Keep them upright. Now, again, like I was talking about with Sark, we got several years' worth of Jimbo Fisher on the record speaking publicly about his team. When Jimbo Fisher says stuff like that, it's not really coach speak. And I thought it was one of the most important sound bites we heard from any coach throughout the spring because the preview magazine culture is going to lead you to believe when you lose a multi-year starting quarterback, in this case Kellen Mond, and you're trying to replace them with whoever it's going to be, they're not going to have a ton of starting experience, then that's a big weakness or maybe at the, at the very least a huge question mark. Well, Jimbo Fisher doesn't seem to think so. What I believe is he thinks he's got a couple of guys he can win with, and it's not really the biggest area of concern that his staff, his offensive staff, has for the offense right now. I think it's offensive line. And I think that's to be expected. And I'll tell you another soundbite that pertains to things well beyond just Texas A&M that he gave in that same postgame interview yesterday. They asked him, are, are you glad you had spring? Which is a no-brainer question, obviously. But then they asked him to dive into it a little bit. And he said, you know, last year we had a pretty veteran-laden team. This year, I have no clue how we would ever field a team, how we would ever field a competent product if we didn't have spring. Now, it's good for Texas A&M that they have it. I just wanted to bookmark that statement, and let's keep that in mind. When we looked at some of these programs last year that had it go off the rails, A&M comes to mind, LSU comes to mind, for whatever reason you believe it happened, I just want you to remember listening to a veteran head coach tell you openly, hey, we got a ton of talent down here, but if we didn't have a spring, we'd probably be terrible this fall. So I just wonder, you know, how much, how much did we see go off the rails for certain programs in 2020 that really we should view through a different lens than we are. Because that's my whole take on Penn State. And so 
you know, Jimbo Fisher kind of validated that, and that doesn't have a whole lot to do with A&M. But we get back on A&M right now. I think this is going to be the best defense he's had there. And they've been incrementally improving defensively every year since he's been there. And now if you look at them, all three levels, when they talk about defensive line, they feel great. They got the right guys to return. They didn't even have Clemens or Leal play yesterday. And they were still harassing quarterbacks all afternoon. Now, is that great? Or is that suspect offensive line play? Well, it's probably a little bit of both. But when you listen to them talk about the guys they have up front, they love it. They feel like they are plus to elite there. When you talk about linebackers with them, they feel like they're plus there. When you talk about the secondary, they're as long and athletic as, and as fast, really, all you can take all three characteristics, as they've been at any point during his tenure, him being Jimbo Fisher, and they feel like they're plus there. And what I'm telling you is there is no level Sometimes when you look at a team, you go, oh, that defensive line could be good, man. That secondary could be good. Those linebackers, though, woof. There isn't that with AM. It's a really low risk, high reward proposition to buy into this defense. There's no weak level, barring injuries or mass transfers, which I don't expect to happen. Texas AM, I think, is going to have the best defense that they've had under Fisher, which begs the question if everyone's asking for an encore of contending for a playoff spot like they did last year, and then the other crowd over here is saying, nah, Jimbo Fisher's overrated as a coach. I see you saying it in the chat right now. I don't know what in the world that means. I'll, I'll address that some other time. But if you're asking if they can do it, well, it's not going to fall on defense because I think the defense is going to be plenty good enough. It's going to fall on offensive line. It's going to fall on developing wide receivers. And I want to say passing game, not just wide receivers. And maturation at the quarterback position. Haynes King, I think it was yesterday, leading a drive under 30 seconds to go until the half through a pick six. You know, that kind of stuff. It's good to get that out of the way in spring and not have it happen during the season. But at receiver, they had nine drops yesterday. They, they were thrown into a lot of tight windows now. So it was really good to see defensively. But they're a situation as well. Texas A&M is a situation where Demas Demas didn't play. Uh, Demon Demas didn't play yesterday. And he's been a guy you're still waiting to explode. Former five-star guy, you're waiting for him to explode. Weidermeyer didn't play yesterday. Baylor Cup obviously didn't play yesterday. And I add, or if, I add those three elements at the same time to their offense this fall, it's a totally different offense. And so obviously the product yesterday pales in comparison if everyone's healthy, if everything works out like it should on paper, to what it should look like this fall. a and going to be a really good team. I saw nothing yesterday in what some would categorize as an ugly spring game. I saw nothing to deter me from, from that feeling.